Hi, I'm Jeff Thacker, an automation specialist from New Bern, North Carolina. Today I'm going to talk to you about utilizing integrated architecture software for Slick 500 to Compact Logic's hardware migrations. So the goal is to migrate an obsolete Slick 500 system to a new Compact Logic. We would begin by itemizing the individual Slick components and then use Integrated Architecture Builder to automatically develop an Excel spreadsheet of the Compact Logic's components. Here we have a 551 processor. AC input and output module, DC input and output module, and analog input and output module. We would start by finding the Rockwell software folder and launching the integrated architecture builder software. We begin by creating a new project and then scrolling down and selecting the Slick 500 migration wizard and then select create. We do have a chassis so we'll add a chassis. We'll keep the default name. We have the option to select the type of compact logics that we want to upgrade to. We'll keep the 5380. Our slick chassis has seven slots, so we'll update that to seven, and then select the chassis power supply. Next, we can utilize the wiring conversion kit or select no to wire the modules manually. Then we would go down and select the processor to populate it into the slick chassis. We would click, drag and drop to the slick chassis, and then a window will pop up to allow us to select the default control logics processor. Or we can select a more capable processor in the event that we might want to upgrade the system to a greater capacity in the future. Next, we can go to our DC input and output modules, and I believe we had an i 16 We can click, drag and drop that module. When we do, the corresponding module in the compact logics chassis is populated. Next, we select our OA16 AC output module. It as well is shown in our Compact Logics chassis. We then select our DC input module. Before I do that, if you notice, two modules will be populated into the Compact Logics chassis the DC input module itself, and then the FPD module, which is a field potential distributor that's automatically added to split the ACIO module SA bus from the DCIA module SA bus. Then we'll continue by selecting a DC output module, dragging and dropping to the chassis. We also had a couple analog cards, so we'll navigate to the analog button, drop an analog input card, and also an analog output card. At this point, we populated the chassis for the slick. We can click OK, and then generate hardware, and then go to the icon on the upper left to finish generating the hardware. There's some messages we can read pertaining to the system that we've created. Click continue to generate the BOM and click save to save the project. And then a list of materials will appear. We can view the materials as an organized, consolidated, or positional BOM. You select the view that you want. It shows each input and output module, the associated RTB module, the processor, even the end cap that's included with the processor. We then click Save to save that to an Excel file. We can open the file, Excel will open, and then the build material is complete. Thank you for watching this tech support video. For more videos like this, please visit and subscribe to the McNaughton McKay YouTube channel.